Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our students online as well. Oh. OK. Shall we begin this class with a word of prayer? Right, let's just pray, and then we'll start. Father, we thank you so much for this time you've given us once again. And Lord, even as we come together to study your word, Lord, we pray that uh, you will speak to our hearts, minister to us, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray that our hearts will be a good ground to receive your word, that it will bear fruit in our lives. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So last class, we did quite a few topics, and we covered quite a few chapters as well. So we'll, we did up to chapter 53, that was walking according to the spirit of life, right? So let's get into chapter 54. Now, uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to go a little quick so that we can try and uh, complete this uh, on time. OK, chapter 54, be in the spirit, right? now. All throughout Apostle Paul's letters, you see Paul talking about the Holy Spirit. And you see how much emphasis he gives on the Holy Spirit, right? Romans 8, 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Right. So Paul is saying here, you are not of the flesh. Now, he's doing a word play here. He's writing to believers, and they are human beings. But Paul is saying, you're not of the flesh. So he's not talking about the physical flesh. right? Whenever you hear the word flesh, there are, there's always two important points. Like You need to look at it both in the physical, in the natural, and also in the spiritual. Look at this, about when we say man, right? It's not just the physical appearance, but also the, the man, the inner man, they say, right? So Paul is exhorting the believers. He's saying, you are not of the flesh. That means you are not anymore living according to the flesh, according to the things of the world. But now you have the spirit. And if the Spirit of God dwells in you, then you walk in the Spirit. Let's read Galatians 5, 16. It's a very familiar verse. Any one of us can read Galatians 5, 16, and also 5, verse 24. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not ful fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm. Okay. I say then, walk in the spirit, so then you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. I remember some of us were asking questions in the mentoring hour, right? And one of the questions was, how can I overcome? Like, how can I uh, you know, live? I want to live uh, according to God's word, but I'm not able to. Right? And remember what, you know, what the answer was? The answer is, it is because sometimes we try to live out of our own strength, our own ability. Now, when we try it on our own, it's very easy to fail. Paul is saying here, walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Because the flesh, by nature, desires things. Right? You don't have to tell a child, are you feeling hungry? Are you feeling hungry? Are you feeling thirsty? No, the child knows. Right? And as the child grows up, the child knows, OK, that's my water bottle. I'll go drink. And the food comes. The child knows that he has to eat. It's regular desires of the flesh. But that same child, as he's growing up, he becomes a teen. Now what's happening? The desires are changing. He's not thinking about water and food and playing in the cycle. He's thinking about other things. He's exposed to the things of this world. Then when he becomes a youth, right? that's an age when you know, their hormones are 
very strong. They want to, they're, they're, uh, the sexual drive is very high. So then the desires of the flesh becomes more. So what happens? It's very easy if we're trying things on our own to fall into those desires. But if you're living in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. What will happen? Say a thought comes, right? Or say your, your, your body desires something, right? If you're walking in the natural, if you're walking in the, you know, in the flesh, you may be able to overcome once, twice, five times, 10 times. But after that, what happens? It's very easy to give in to those desires. But if we walk in the spirit, it is not our strength. The Holy Spirit inside us will empower us to overcome those temptations. Look at Jesus, right? Best example. Was Jesus hungry when he was fasting? 40 days he hasn't eaten or drank water. Can you imagine that? 40 days. Now, after this session, sometimes we feel like drinking water. We spoke so much. 40 days. He hasn't drank water, he hasn't eaten. He was, I'm sure he would have been so weak and hungry. But what made him to still be strong? Because what is inside him? The Holy Spirit empowered him to overcome. Right? And the same Holy Spirit is in us. Paul writes and he says, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that is in you and me. So now. I'm walking, I'm doing things in, in my life. There's a temptation that comes immediately. What do I do? Immediately I say, devil, I don't live according to the flesh. I live according to the spirit. And what does the spirit say? The spirit is saying, the Holy Spirit is strengthening me and saying, no, don't go for that. Just stay on. Just overcome that. I'm with you. I will strengthen you. On our own, it's very easy to fall. Right? So Paul is writing here, he's saying, walk in the spirit. The, way, the word walk means to live your life in the spirit. right? And verse 24, let's read that, Galatians 5, 24. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Mm. Mm. Those who desire the Lord Jesus have crucified the flesh and the desires of the flesh. Right? So what, if you think of it, what made Apostle Paul so strong? Why was it, what was it about him that he was so brave and so strong even in the midst of these persecutions? You know, I, I believe that the Apostle Paul, you know, he understood that this flesh is nothing. The flesh will go. That's why he writes in 2 Corinthians, he said, we do not war, war against flesh and blood. A war is not against people, but it's against principalities and powers of darkness, against demons and his territory, against them. So when you and I are praying, we are not just praying. The supernatural law we have here, something is happening in the spiritual realm. You know, God begins to, either in our own lives, He's doing something, He's changing us, He's breaking that hard-heartedness, or He's making us, uh, you know, uh, understand what is love. So many things He can speak to us. There's something happening in the spiritual. After uh, after prayer, do we uh, do we look something different? Look the same. But there's something happening inside. Right? And here Paul is saying, live by the Spirit. Overcome the things of the flesh by the Spirit. Right? So it's very important that we understand this. Right? In every area of our life, when we depend on the Holy Spirit, you will see victory. If we haven't seen victory, say for example, we have failed in one place, don't run away from God. Don't say, oh God, I made a mistake. I don't feel like coming back to you. I don't feel like, you know, same mistake again and again and again. Why am I doing this mistake? It's a natural tendency. 
But remember, therefore, now there is no, what's the word? Condemnation, right? So now you can go back to Jesus. Is it okay if I go 100 times back to Jesus for the same sin? It's okay. Because he's a God who forgives us, right? But he also wants us to change that. Right? It's not like, okay, he's saying, come to me and I will forgive you and I keep doing the same thing. No. He's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us the authority. He's given us the power. He expects us to walk in that, right? So how do we get the Holy Spirit to work in our lives? How do we enable him to you know, take control over every area of our life? Look at uh, chapter 55, yield to the Spirit. The word yield, what is the word yield? Right? So for example, you know, the word yield is to surrender to the Spirit, right? Uh, how many of you have seen a, you know, uh, maybe a parachute jump? Right? You go up the, on a helicopter or a, an airplane and you see those guys, they, they jump off. Right? Skydiving, yeah, they, they jump off. And then what happens? They are yielding to what is, to just what is there. And then there's a, there's a time and, and there's a right maneuver to release that parachute. He can't jump and release the parachute immediately. Oh, I'm going to die. No. There's a certain time when he's coming down, he needs to release that parachute. He yields to the parachute, he, the wind. He, he's learned all of that. So he understands. To yield is to surrender. That means I, I don't have any authority right now. I'm surrendering the whole thing. Right? And... Romans 8, 12 and 13 says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. What is the word debtor? The word debt means when you owe somebody something. And say, for example, you, you meet your friend. You say, hey, I'm in a big need. Can you give me this much money? And he says, okay, take. Since you need it for your college fees, you take. You take the money. And then he, it's one month now, and when you see him, you know, oh man, I'm in debt. I need to pay back this amount to him. Now, if that is not there, please go and pray. But that feeling should be there, right? Oh, I have to give him the money because he helped me. That's called debt. I owe him something, right? Now, Paul is saying, I'm not a debtor to the flesh. I don't owe my flesh anything. I don't owe the devil anything. Right? Uh, it's not like I have to tell the devil, please let me go. So that I, I, I'll give you this, in this portion of my life, let me go. No. We don't owe anything to the devil. Right? Not to the flesh, but to live according. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, you, if by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. Right? You put to death the deeds done in the body. Right? Now, now, why is it important to yield to the spirit? You know, in supernatural hour, I always bring this up. I see that we all are, you know, surrendering, we are, we are praying, we are singing. That is good. But it's also very important to yield to the Spirit. Right? So the Holy Spirit can speak to us in different ways. And you will learn more in the Holy Spirit class. The Holy Spirit, when we yield, when we surrender to Him, He begins to take control. He begins to speak in different ways. He has His own way. But we have to surrender. Remember, the Holy Spirit is like a dove. Right? What is dove in Hindi? Which one? Ah, okay. So everyone understood that, right? He's like a dove. He's gentle like a dove. The Holy Spirit can bring conviction, but he will not hate you and say, you have to do this, otherwise I will take you out of this place. And He's not going to do that. 
otherwise you know danger will come upon you you have to pray you have to read your word you will not say all that remember he is the spirit of god the holy spirit is the spirit of god he will bring conviction he will tell you do this don't do this speak this don't speak this he will say now if i am not surrendered to him i will not understand him i will not understand why he is saying this or why he is telling me to you know not to speak or why is the holy spirit telling me to you know get up in the morning and pray or read the word why is he saying i don't know why because i have not surrendered to him if i am surrendered to him and i'll say okay god if you're saying i'll do it i don't understand why but i'll do it right so it's very important that we be surrendered to the holy spirit say holy spirit you speak to me i surrender everything don't keep five things with you and then say i surrender the rest five surrender your full self to god that's when he takes come control don't say this you know this three things in my life i will handle lord my work and my friends i'll handle the other things you take care of no he wants complete surrender every area of our life surrender it then he begins to work in our life i'm not saying the heavens will open and he'll come and start speaking but what i'm saying is you will understand and recognize the voice of the holy spirit he will speak very clearly now what happens for example there's this young boy right he becomes a believer and the holy spirit is telling him why don't you pray every day for one hour okay maybe half an hour right but this boy says oh man i got to go to meet my friends they're all playing football they're all going here they're doing so many things but this boy is going to college and after after coming back from college the holy spirit is saying why don't you spend half an hour with me he knows that god is speaking to him but he's saying no there's so many other things are there no not wrong things playing cricket and football and these sports is not wrong but i want to go there so what happens if he goes and he doesn't give that half an hour which god is speaking to him about what am i doing i'm not surrendering to him now if i don't surrender to him there's no opportunity for the holy spirit to speak to me you understand what i'm saying right i need to give the time to god and god begins to minister now the same person if he says okay god i'll sacrifice that soccer football for half an hour but i'll spend time in your presence 15 minutes i'll read the word 15 minutes i will pray what am i doing i'm surrendering to what the holy spirit is saying right and over time you'll realize hey god is anointing you there's an anointing you you will feel strength you will feel power you will feel authority right all of a sudden you will feel that no devil can come near you you feel so strong like a lion inside you may be as thin as a stick but inside you'll be like a lion roaring nothing can stop you why because you're yielded to the spirit right when you yield to the spirit no work of the devil can overpower you the devil will be there but it cannot overpower the devil will bring temptations but he cannot overpower now if we say oh lord uh, you know why are all these problems coming to me why me only why me only? now what what can we do what can we do? you know the first thing that you know a lot of people come for prayer and they ask for prayer you know this is going on this is going on can you pray sometimes i uh, you know when i'm led no i ask them how how long do you pray i pray for 10 minutes so, 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 so you're going through a season in your life you're going through a challenge you're asking god for example is a as a person who's doesn't have a job and he's looking out for a job just desperately he needs a job right but is i have to get a job but he's praying for 10 minutes now what happened what what's happening here right it's like he's you know he's going to the pastor i'm just giving an example right he's going to the pastor please pray for me pastor i need to get a job right 
I have to get a job. Pastor will pray. Okay, Jesus, please open a door for him. But what is he doing? Nothing. Ten minutes. Now, in ten minutes, there's if you want to see a breakthrough in your life, you and I, we have to put our hands to the plow. We have to go through. Don't put give all the work to the pastors and leaders. You pray and I'll get a job. Doesn't work that way. But still, God is faithful. He does it. But he wants to see you and me do the hard work. Right? So yield to the spirit. Next one. 8.14, Romans 8.14. For as, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. This is one of the most common verses that we use. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now let's reverse that. As many are the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Are you a son of God? Are you a child of God? then automatically you can write equals led by the Spirit of God. Do you have the Spirit of God? Then you can write equals, I'm a son of God. Very simple. Right? If you are led by the Spirit, you're the son of God. You're a child of God. If you are a child of God, you are led by the Spirit. But where is the Spirit? Nobody is leading me. You have to go and ask. You have to spend time in his presence. How can he speak to you? He can speak to you through the word of God. He can speak to you through a vision, dream, picture, so many ways. But he needs you to draw your attention to him. Right? That's why, you know, when it comes to worship, when it comes to spending time in his presence, it's very easy because our mind will have so many things going on. Yes? Right. So many things are going on in our mind. It's very easy to lo lose focus. Right. That's why the psalmist says, I fix my gaze upon him. Early in the morning will I seek him. What is, to, what is the word seek? I will search. Search for him. That means there are many things going on. There are hundred things going on in my mind, but I have to search for him. I have to put all those hundred things aside. Say, Jesus, speak to me. I want to think about you. And then what happens? We are led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit begins to speak and minister to us. Right? So none of us can say, hey, how come he has the word of knowledge I don't have? How come he has prophecy, prophetic he's speaking I don't have? None of us can say that. Why? Is it a special spirit for you, this person and the other person? Or is it the same spirit? Same spirit. None of us can say, hey, how come he prays and there's healing and I pray there's no healing? There's no special spirit. It's the same spirit. It's just that, of course, there's a, a function, there's a calling that God has, but the same spirit works. Right? If you're a believer for two days, you can make somebody who has fourth stage cancer stand in front of you, pray, and, uh, receive, and that person can get healed. Why? Because you believe in the cross. It's not because you're an anointed healer. All of that is there. But it is all because of the Holy Spirit that is working. You get what I'm saying? You're, you're understanding, right? OK, listen to the witness of the Holy Spirit, Romans 8. 15 through 17. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again of fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Verse 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And of children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. This is a powerful. Let's look, just break it down, right? We did not receive a spirit of bondage. What is bondage? What's the Hindi word for bondage? Bandhan, yeah. In the old covenant, it was a spirit of bondage because they were gripped under the enemy. There was no freedom. 
Right? They were still living. They were waiting for because it was the cross had not yet happened. And even now, there are people around us. What happened? Why do they do? Why why are people going through sickness and disease and all that's happening because of bondages that the devil places on people? Right? It's like this, right? You, you, uh, all of you have seen cattle, no, on the field for farming. They use the cattle, the ox, right? It's like the devil has put a yoke on the neck, and he puts you, puts you down there. It's like a bondage; can't get out of it, right? But what does it say here? You did not receive that bondage, the spirit of bondage, to fear. But you receive the spirit of adoption. What is the word adoption in Hindi? Sorry? Yeah. Everyone understood that? Right. The spirit of adoption. That means we were orphans. We may have parents, all of that, in the natural. But in the spiritual, we were orphans. We had nobody. Nobody was there for us. But the Lord Jesus, by his blood, he, he called us his children. And now we have the spirit of adoption. Remember that story I told you? The rich man was going and there was a little boy in the slum. So the rich man took this slum boy, took him into the palace. What happened? He's no more a slum boy. What is he now? He's a rich man's son. So he can't behave like how he behaved in the slums. He has to behave like he's you know, with royalty. He's the son of a rich man. So verse 16, the spirit himself bears witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, Let me ask you this question. Where is God inside us? Where else? Show me. Can we see? This is normal questions people ask. Show me. Right? They say, I can't show you. Why? Because God is spirit. What does it say here? The spirit, the Holy Spirit, bears witness to our spirit. So it's, we have a spirit, right? The Holy Spirit, when we become believers, joins with our spirit. How many of you, while you know, when you're praying, suddenly you'll get a word? And you say, oh, God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're not thinking of it, but suddenly it came. It's because the Holy Spirit is bearing witness to your spirit. They're together. Right? So, so what's happening here? The Spirit of God is bearing witness with our spirit, and they become one. It's united. So the Holy Spirit, the devil will come and say, you are a failure, you are useless. But the Holy Spirit is saying, no, you are my son, you are my child. You are the child of God. Don't listen to the devil. He's bearing witness. So we can say, Holy Spirit, the devil is saying, I'm, a, you know, I'm useless, I'm uh, unworthy. But you're saying I'm a child of God. How is it? He'll bear witness. The Holy Spirit will say, open the scriptures. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, you're not coming by your works. You're coming by the grace of God. You're coming by the blood of Jesus. I have washed your sins. So he's bearing witness. You know what is witness, no? In the court, you need a witness. You need proof. The Holy Spirit is proof that we are the child of God. Can somebody come and tell you, hey, you know, when, whenever we look at persecution that is happening around... I say, you don't become a Christian. Can somebody come and take out the Holy Spirit from you? Nobody can do that. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness. Nobody can change that. Right? That is why when you look at people, you know, people in North India and people who are going through, uh, you know, persecutions, how are they so strong? Right? Now, how many of you have faced persecution face to face? One, two. Yeah, all, all from North India. Yeah. And it's not easy, right? It is very scary because I've seen it. 
and it's you know I've I've been in that place. All you lose your guard. You don't know what they're going to do next. It's scary. But the Holy Spirit bears witness. When he's there, you'll not say, no, I don't believe in Jesus. You'll say, yes. You'll be willing to stand your ground. Not because in, the, in, in your spirit, you'll be fearful. What are they going to do? But in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will speak to your spirit and say, you don't worry, I'm with you. That is bearing witness. I'm with you. Will the difficulties come? It will come, but still I'm with you. Bearing witness. Everyone understood that? Right? Listen to the witness of the Holy Spirit. Right? Verse 17 is good. And if children, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Now, look at this picture. You got the... Is there a board here? Okay. Maybe next time, I'll, next class, I'll use it. Look at this. Okay, just picture this. The Father, the Son, and we are here. It's like a triangle. Right? The Father, Jesus, and we are here. The Father, the Son is heir to everything that the Father has. Heir means everything that belongs to the Father goes to the Son. Yes? Right. If you took, look at the natural Father, everything goes to the Son. That means he's an heir. Right? So after the father passes on, the son will take over the business. He's the heir to the next line of business. Now in the spiritual, the father is calling Jesus son because he says that, right? This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So everything of the father is given to the son. And it says here, we are joint heirs with Christ. So now... Jesus is here, we are here, and we all become children of God. So we are joint heirs with Christ. Whatever God is giving Jesus, he's also giving us. Because we are joint heirs with Christ. So when, just think about this. When God the Father is looking at you and me, he, the, the amount of love, or how much he loved Jesus, the same way he loves us. Can you can you picture that? Just as how he loved Jesus, God loves us because we are his children. But uh, Father, Jesus did so much more. No, Jesus did great things. It's okay. The love is the same. I'm not. Uh, I know that Jesus died on the cross as a son. He paid the price. He did everything. But the love is the same for all of us. It doesn't change. right? So just because Jesus is heir, we become joint heirs with Christ. When Jesus sees us, he sees Jesus in us. Sorry, when God sees us, he sees Jesus in us. So how much, what a blessing that is. We may be nowhere close to his attributes. We're just growing in Christ. We're still learning so much. But when the Father sees us, he sees us in the same kind of love. Right? So, verse 58. Everyone following? Yes? Okay. Roman, uh, sorry. Uh, praying empowered by the Holy Spirit or by the Spirit of life. Romans 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered right look at the first portion likewise the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses everyone say weaknesses how many of us have weaknesses all of us have weaknesses. We all go through weaknesses, right? But what does it say there? The Spirit of God helps us in our weakness. If I keep telling I don't have any weakness, the Spirit of God is not... It's like we're closing the door to the devil. To, sorry, to the Holy Spirit. We're closing the door and saying, Holy Spirit, don't worry. I will look after. I will look after. Don't worry. You think of this, right? So I tell you, okay, can we just clean this whole, this entire hall? So one of us will take you know, the broom and we'll start sweeping this entire place. 
and then we'll go to the corner take all the dust oh man now what do we do so one of you go get a carpet and put it on that is the place clean outwardly it's clean but there is still a mess inside nobody knows it so sometimes we do that right areas in our heart we'll say god this one this one this one this one but there are certain areas we hide it says here the holy spirit helps us in our weakness whatever your weakness is my weakness right i just go go back to god and i say god this is my weakness this is where i feel i should you know change this is where i should you know learn to talk or learn to you know be more forgiving learn to walk in love in these areas of my life this is a weakness that i have so i surrender it to god and i say god you help me now remember it's not it's not like overnight uh, you know everything will be fine no it'll take time right it'll take time for us to overcome and to you know go through those weakness but the, the holy spirit helps us and one of the ways that he helps us is he helps us by he himself praying in and through us right and here he's talking about praying in the spirit all of us pray in the spirit most of us okay praying in the spirit he makes intercessions with groanings you know what is the best part anywhere we are we can pray in the spirit is there a location that we cannot pray in the spirit is the holy spirit limited by place no every time i'm driving going anywhere i'm praying in tongues just just praying right i sometimes just play the music while driving but i'm praying in tongues also the holy spirit speak now i have a choice i can think of 100 other things i can think of many other thing work all of those things are there but i intentionally say no let me pray in the spirit that will help me in my weakness you now sometimes as pastors we have so much to do so many people to meet and tasks to do it's a lot of work sometimes get very tiring right and i tell myself man i'm so tired but we are encouraged we are doing this because the holy spirit empowers us he strengthens us uh, so very important spend time praying in the spirit it can be you can start off with 10 minutes you know what so some things that i do personally is you know when i wake up early in the morning obviously i'm sleepy right obviously i want to sleep more and i want to rest some more i want to get some good sleep maybe till you know take a day off and till 10 o'clock just sleep i feel like doing those things and when we wake up in the morning for prayer it's obvious it's a natural thing we will be sleepy but the holy spirit helps us so one of the things i do is the moment i wake up i i begin to pray in the spirit now when i'm praying in the spirit what's happening okay uh, i i i may not be using a lot of my energy but the spirit inside is uttering words right now after 5 minutes the sleep is gone after 10 minutes you get some kind of a strength 15 minutes the you know you feel like wow you feel strong then by the time you finish your prayer and reading word you're ready for the day are you physically tired could be but you're ready the holy spirit has empowered you right section 5 sorry section 7 59 in him we have redemption right now we've talked about the word redemption right redemption is what you Jesus paid the price he he took us from a place of slavery and we we have been redeemed remember the example i gave you you go to a supermarket you buy something they'll give you rupees 1000 off in your next purchase so they'll give you a coupon and the next time when you go you give the coupon they say okay you are redeemed your coupon now whatever you want you'll get a 1000 rupees discount simple example redeemed right brought back by paying a price that's what jesus did so how are we redeemed one we are redeemed by his blood 
Ephesians 1 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace everyone say by his blood we are redeemed by his blood we're not redeemed just because you know of anything that is of our own selves or because we uh, you know uh, Jesus thought about it we redeemed by his blood he paid the price Jesus didn't think and say okay the work is done no the price was paid the blood was shed and the book of Hebrews says his blood speaks even now can you believe that when we pray in the blood of Jesus when we you and I pray we say I cover this place with the blood of Jesus what do, what are we doing his blood is his blood is speaking his blood is powerful I, I'm washed by the blood of Jesus nobody's coming and pouring blood in. no it's, a, it's not it's just not natural but it's in the spiritual the blood of Jesus is powerful even the devils are scared of the blood of Jesus they are very scared of it think of this you can have a person in bondage right maybe a person who's possessed by demons now you go there you're standing there this person has demons inside him and you're praying I, I, I command you by the blood of Jesus right I command healing I command that you demon get out of his body and I command healing over his physical body in the blood of Jesus now the blood of Jesus was shed to 2022 years ago where's the blood now it's there the devil knows when you declare the blood of Jesus the devil knows he knows the authority we may not be scholars in the Bible but if we know the power of his blood he knows demons will have to flee right his blood speaks Hebrews 12 22 and 24 but you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven to the to God the judge of all to the spirits of just men made perfect the Jesus to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better than that of Abel in the spiritual realm blood speaks let's look at two instances one is Cain killed Abel and Cain is trying to hide God comes to Cain and says Cain Where's your brother? Uh, I don't know. I'm not my brother's keeper. And what does God say? His blood is crying out for justice. His, basically, God is saying, you have killed him, but his blood is calling out. His blood is you know, calling out for me for vengeance. Abel didn't do anything to you. What did he do? He gave what is best from his offering. Why are you so worried? Why did you have to kill him? But now you, the blood of Abel is avenging you. The blood speaks. Look at the second example. When, when, we, when we look later on, Jesus, his blood speaks. When, and, and even in the book of Revelation, the blood of the martyrs, those who are killed for the sake of Jesus, the blood of the martyrs, they're the, they crying out, when will you avenge us? Meaning, when you will take revenge, Jesus? They have killed us. They shed our blood. The blood of the martyrs is crying out. So it's a spiritual thing. It's not in the physical, but it's a spiritual thing. And the blood speaks. The blood of Abel cried out for justice. The blood of Jesus proclaims God's justice has been fully satisfied. There was not a drop of his blood left in his body. Now, you know, most of us have seen Passion of the Christ. No? You've seen Passion of the Christ. 
that is maybe 5% of what happened to Jesus. What do you see? 5%. Imagine, you know, history says, I think I've shared this before, history and scientists say that when Jesus, if he had to die with no blood in his body, they say that his ribs were seen. His, they could see his heart pumping. There was no flesh. Every time he took a breath, his heart would be, there was pressure on his heart. Jesus died naked on the cross. It was not uh, what we see now. He would have been just one small, just so much. That's it. See, 90% of our body is blood. If there's no blood, what is there? Nothing is there. Right? We'll shrink. Right? We'll become like a stick. Now, not even a drop, every drop in Jesus' body was shed. How would he have been? I'm just trying to get a picture for you. Could have carried him like this. Put him. Nothing. Nothing. It is absolutely nothing. It was not like Jesus was oh, like these. what we see in television. No, 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 no. You could have just taken him out, put him like this on, on, a, on a table, on one of these tables. That's it. One person can carry. No blood. All the blood gone. The blood, the justice of God was put on Jesus. Every drop of blood that pierced his side, water came out. It was nothing. I said the Bible says he was obedient to death, even death on a cross. The most humiliating, painful death was the cross. There's no other death more humiliating and painful. Why did God choose such a such a such a painful death? Because God had to put all his justice on Jesus. The price had to be paid. The blood speaks. When you and I declare the blood of Jesus, the blood is speaking. Don't feel this blood is some simple blood. No. It's the blood of Jesus. It's powerful. Still working, right? We are delivered from Satan's dominion. We, we are right now God's property. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For you were bought at a price, Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God. We talked about it, right? About the, being the temple of God. What else we are redeemed from? We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Christ became a curse so that we can become the righteousness. He took up all the sins. He became a curse for us. The curse of the law was upon him. Sin and sickness and death, everything was upon him so that we can become the righteousness of God. Then we are redeemed from every lawless deed, from the things that, that take us away from the good works and the good things that God has done for us. We are redeemed from the present evil age. Can I just take two minutes, please? Right, I'll just finish this. Galatians 1, 3, and 4. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. So... So let's just look at that. Redeemed from this present evil age, right now, the devil has control over regions and dominions in the spiritual realm and also in the natural. But you and I are redeemed from that evil age, from the evil of the devil. We are redeemed from it. it is, it's like this. God has placed two doors. And the Lord Jesus is saying, which door do you want to go in? And Jesus himself says, no, there's a narrow path and there's a wide path. It's easy to go to the wide path. 
but it's difficult to go into the narrow path. So the Lord Jesus is saying, I have redeemed you from this present age, from demons. You don't open doors for the devil. Don't let the devil speak into you. You have already, I have paid the price. Jesus is saying, I've paid the price. So you just have to believe in it, right? And we are redeemed. Don't let the devil take control over your life. Get him out of your life. Get him out of every area. Say, no, these, these are certain things. I will get him out of it. He has no place in my life. He has no place in my heart. We are redeemed from the present evil world. So when people look at us and they make fun of us and they say, hey, you know, he doesn't do anything wrong. Be glad, rejoice, because that means you're in the right path. You're redeemed. You're no longer living in the evils of this world, but you're living free from sin. Amen? All right. So we'll pick up from next class 67 onwards. We'll, when we should be able to complete. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you all, those who are online.